<laughs> lah. <laughs> what is up, guys? Welcome to the first ever video of Developer Habits. Developer Habits is a new YouTube channel for software engineers interested in becoming better developers. The main topics discussed here are growth mindset, developer lifestyle, and technical tutorials. And the main goal is well to help you guys and myself become a better developer through the habit of continuous learning. My name is Ketmar. I'm a full stack engineer from Estonia with over eight years of freelancing experience and a bit over three years of professional web development experience. I hope you enjoy this channel and let's get started. During my professional career, I've had an opportunity to work with some really smart and experienced developers. I've also had an opportunity to work with smart but less experienced developers by mentoring them. And actually, for the past three months, I've been leading a project that consisted of two mid-level developers and three interns. During this project, I recognized myself in the interns that we were working with, because at times, I saw them do the same mistakes and form the same bad habits I did when I was a junior developer. So now, as a former junior developer and also a mentor, I've now come up with a list of 10 tips a beginner developer should keep in mind to make their life easier as a beginner. Tip number one, do not try to learn everything at once. From my own experience, I dare to say that learning to code is hard. Not just because you have to learn to write code, but because there are so many decisions to make. Which language to choose, which frameworks to use, and so on and so on. I've been through this and I remember asking myself, okay, I decided to learn JavaScript. Now, which front-end libraries should I learn? At that time, Backbone was quite popular, but React also started to emerge. There was jQuery, and you could do similar things with all of them. And nowadays, you have Vue.js, you have React, you have Angular, all trying to solve the same problem. So my advice here is to just pick one and go with it. And once you've learned the basics of one framework or one language, Transitioning to the new one or learning the new one is so much easier. So yeah, don't try to learn everything at once. Point number two, instead of rushing, take it slowly and try to understand what you're actually doing. Another thing I did as a junior, but also noticed some of our interns do, is rushing. Whenever you get the new task, it's easy to get excited, you know, you want to start writing the code. And sometimes it helps, but sometimes you just, well, you fulfill the task, but in a really hackish way. And my advice here is to actually, instead of writing code, you pick a sheet of paper, plan out everything you want to do, and then start coding. This way, you can structure your approach to the task. You can plan everything ahead. In case of questions, you can go and ask uh, about different kinds of solutions. And in the end, writing the code is just a matter of, you know, putting your ideas from the paper to code. So yeah, next time you want to start writing codes, think what you're about to write. Third point, do not copy and paste. When you find a solution online, understand it, play around with it, and rewrite it. Sometimes when you have to tackle a problem you don't know the solution to, it makes sense to do some research in the internet. But please, when you do find a solution, do not just copy and paste it. Believe me, I've been through the phase where I was creating WordPress templates just by copy and pasting pieces of code together, and yes, the pages worked, but it contained lots of bugs and the code didn't really tolerate any criticism. So instead, what you can do, when you find a working solution, then just read it through line by line, try to understand everything inside of it, and finally, rewriting. 
This gives you an opportunity to actually learn from the internet. Point number four, time box yourself. Yeah, I, I can't overemphasize the importance of that point. Time box yourself. I've done it so many times and I still do it sometimes that when there's an exciting task, I just get lost in time. I just want to solve the problems and I don't care about anything else. Well, a good developer knows when to ask for help. And this is where time boxing comes in. So basically what it means, Whenever you get a new task or assignment and you know it's going to be a bit more complex, then just time box yourself. Take like 30 minutes, come up with your ideas and if you don't know the solutions or want to discuss things, then after those 30 minutes, go and discuss the solutions with your colleagues. This way, firstly, you have given some thought to the problem, but you can also get ideas from other developers. Also, you don't lose time by, you know, just working on something that may have a really simple solution, but because you're in having a tunnel vision, you just can't find it. So yeah, time box your tasks, ask for help, and make sure that you don't spend too much time on something that doesn't require it. Time boxing actually brings me to another point. Fifth point, make a plan before diving in. Regarding planning and time boxing, there's another effective yet really simple method to approach your problems, and that's called chunking. So basically what it means, if, we, if you have a big problem, let's say you have to build a search bar that has the text area and icon parts, then instead of writing everything in one go, just turn the task into smaller parts. Firstly, work on the text area and then work on the icon part. This way you have small doable action items, but it's easier for yourself to follow and you also get to have a sense of accomplishment much more often. Point number six, have a side project that makes use of the same technologies you use at work. If you're working as a beginner developer, then my advice would be to have a side project that utilizes the same tools and languages that you use at work on the project. Why? Usually when you work at bigger companies, you don't get to build services on your own that often. Meaning, you get a task to add a feature or fix a bug, but you know, it's not building stuff on your own. Whereas, if you have a side project, it's you who has to make the architectural decisions, it's you who has to fix the bugs, and it's you who has to research how to do things. It gives you an experience for both making those architectural decisions, but also teaches you the tools you use at work. So maybe next time, when a problem comes up at work, you already know the answer to it. Be humble. I remember when I was better programming with my mentors and I sometimes got myself thinking like, oh my god, how doesn't he know about this new cool feature or about this cool new shorthand? Thinking back and having been a mentor now, I got to see it from the other side. And my takeaway is that no one will never know everything. You, as someone who has just learned about new things, yes, it's cool, it's good, but software development is about continuous learning and knowing new cool features doesn't make you a good developer. Development is much more about communication, architectural decisions and software design. It's about making code easy to understand and maintainable. So. Next time, when you see that someone doesn't know anything, be humble, teach them, and be thankful that you can code. Point number eight, keep a journal of what you're doing. Now, this method is something I actually stole from one of my colleagues. 
he was always keeping a journal of what he did. Whenever he learned something new, he wrote it down. And I believe it's a really good method for two main reasons. Firstly, you have to write things down in a way so that you also could understand it later, meaning you have to teach yourself. And secondly, you will always have a reference of what you've done in the past, meaning that when you have solved a problem in the past, you can also use the same solution for future problems. Point number nine, get away from the computer. I can't count the times I've had a problem and I've come up with a solution while I'm away from the computer. It has happened during jogging or having conversations with people or during small coffee breaks or even just before falling asleep. My point here is that you don't have to be behind a computer to work on your problems. And I would use it as an opportunity to just, you know, walk around and have a rest, which actually brings me to the last and maybe most important point in this list. Have a rest. You'll be more productive and remember things better. The previous point naturally leads me to the fact that it's important to have a rest. It's sometimes I myself struggle with, but in the end, I try to acknowledge that it's important to have a rest, to have small breaks, but also time for your hobbies. For example, during your work day, have like chunks of time of 30 or 40 minutes, and after that period ends, go for a small walk of five minutes, just to clear your head and give your Self some time to think. Also, have time for your hobbies that are not related to programming. Whether it's going to the gym, jogging, uh, playing instruments or whatnot, just try to get away from your programming problems. So guys, that's it. My 10 tips for beginner developers. If you learned anything new or if you just like this video, then please hit the subscribe button below and I promise I will deliver more videos where you can learn how to become a better developer. With that said, I thank you for listening and see you the next time. Ciao.